So we have Vinay with us. Vinay is our uh, old alumnus. 1991, Vinay? 1991 looks really long time. He is, looks very young. So you can see the perception and all his action here, right here. So yes, so Vinay is 1991 computer science from IIT Bombay. He went and did his PhD from New York. And after that, he was part of a startup himself, Saskin Technologies. He might mention about it sometime. And also, he has been working on his own, either as a consultant or as a resource person for some of the new companies. He has been actually involved with the innovation programs at IIM Bangalore, where he has worked with Professor Rushikesh Krishnan, who is now IIM Indoor Director. He is an author of a book on innovation. And we are very happy that he has agreed to spare his time with us and we'll have next few sessions from Vinay. So with that, I will ask him to start his session. Thanks, Vinay. Welcome. Yeah. Hey, guys. Good to be here. Uh, at least I see one. You're there in the last years. I was there last year as well. Uh, maybe I'll ask a few questions before you ask some questions to me. Um, what, what brought you here to the class? <laughs> Any, uh, anything you're curious about? This class meaning this course, I mean, not today in particular, but anything just to understand what, what brings you here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 And so it's kind of a logical conclusion that knowing the business cases, now how do you uh, put in all the tech, uh, put in all the technical knowledge and visualize it and then direct it towards innovation? Okay. Cool. Anyone? Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. How idea comes? Yeah. Okay. 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 Two. How do you start something? Okay. Sounds like a good good idea. Any any other thought? Nothing, nothing particular. Okay, that's fine too. <laughs> um, okay, let me then ask some specific questions now. See actually Shakti, um, shall we this half thing we did it? I want to also understand a um, little bit from your side. So I this is not to judge anything, right? I'm we're just I'm just gonna ask a couple of questions and you pl please write and give me so that I'll get some input as to what you're thinking. So this question is uh, easy. Uh, you imagine you are a chief technology officer, which is a fake term actually. There may not be any chief technology officer for best, but let's assume there is somebody um, who is looking at how do you manage it better. And now you have to make a decision, which technology would you invest? Um, is the question clear? I mean. There are best buses, right? DST buses running in the city. Yeah. Somebody needs to make some decisions about technology. Is that correct? For the functioning of the buses. So let's assume there is a post like this. The chief technology officer. You are that person right now. And you have to imagine there's some budget always. CTO has some budget. He has to allocate that budget. Okay, let's invest here. Where would you invest? And why? So I guess the why is also important, yeah. So I'm going to circulate these sheets. Just write down what you feel, and there's of course there's nothing right and wrong here, yeah. If you're really not sure of only one thing, maybe you can give a couple of options also. That's fine. Okay, I'm not so sure. Maybe this or that. It's okay. But let's see where you want to invest. That's more important. Just write bullets. Okay, this is not like essay time. 
yeah, few couple of things and this is I, why I would invest and that is it, yeah, ok done, I am going to give you one more question similar type which is now, now take the same thing for your hostel, let us say you are at I am not sure this term is there, you have sports sake and you have cultural sake and let us assume you have a tech sake, I do not know there is no tech sake I guess right, let us assume there is one and he makes a decision about which technology would you invest for the hostel, where would you invest, just write down that as well, just see where would you invest, we have Wi-Fi in the hostel right now, yeah, see it was not there when I was there, yeah, so there are some investment over some period is going on, right, so then ok, so let maybe hear from couple of you as to you know what did you write just to get some conversation here, where would you invest, where would any of you, where would you invest, yes, GPS ok and of course the reason being that you want to track the thing ok, sound like a definitely a good potential, where any other candidate for investment for best, automation, automation of Oh, the driverless stuff, ok, you would invest in a driverless, uh, ok, I mean that sounds like a, definitely there is no candidate which is bad candidate here, right, all candidates are good candidates, any other possibilities, where would you? And there is no classified tracking which will process the uh, data collected that you have Ok, routing, you are, you are going to process, you know, check the optimal routes, ok, that sounds like a good investment too, any other? Wi-Fi, wi ok, you will invest in Wi-Fi, yeah, ok, as of course consumers would love. Solar technology, ok, that sounds like also like a good investment to try, yeah, so I, I mean I like all the options, good options, uh, how about here, what would you, where would you invest, food analytics, ok, boy, all right, <laughs> yeah, anything, anything else, hostel no, nobody has, any problem, <laughs> no problem, sorry, animal control technology, it is ok, boy, all right, I mean like a, <laughs> ok, good, all right, you know sounds good, maybe there is not too much of technology that hostel needs, who knows, <laughs> sorry, non-academic for example, oh you are ok, you want students to not study so much, but not so much. <laughs> Ok, that was fine, <laughs> something that can entertain or whatever you know, yeah, I mean why not, yeah. Um, one of the reasons I am asked is this, you know, you, these are the decisions which you would have to make, whether it is a startup or it is a big company, you know, what are kind of decisions, should I invest or not, should I invest, I mean solar, should I invest or not invest, this fleet management, should I invest or not, when should I invest, if I want to invest, if you want to invest is it today, is it next quarter, is it next year, how much, I mean anybody would have a limited budget, is it like 2 percent of that or 50 percent of that and then how do I know if it is going well, I mean I invested something last quarter or maybe last year, how is it doing, because otherwise if it is not doing well, if I invested in solar but the returns of that may be very poor. I might as well take that and put somewhere else. So, these are the kind of decisions which in some sense I would say when you buy a phone, you are making somewhat, is it 3G or 4G, is it two cameras or I do not know what, I mean you probably would know better than me, but they are technology decisions that you, you are trying to evaluate some of these things. Uh, now, if you take the known brands Amazon, Flipkart or Google, and you take machine learning for example, let us take something which is really, really hot, do you think they would, somebody would be making decisions of this kinds in these companies, somebody has to make, somebody has to make, yeah, my guess is this is no longer a decision for these guys, they have of course been invested, uh, when they would have invested some time back, but how much would vary a lot, Flipkart would be different from Amazon and Amazon would be different from Google and, and so on, 
yeah um, they would have been invested differently in different projects in different context of the applications and so on yeah but they would definitely be I mean I, I met in fact I met one of my classmate who was um, doing PhD with me I, he visited he is in Google research and he was managing this kind of projects for machine learning you know so and he, he's not I mean do you want to invest that for education see it's wide canvas right you want to apply this for what all so it becomes tricky question to resolve let's take something more um, I mean uh, tangible so you take internet of things right you you're familiar with it right? you have sensors and you have uploading data would Crompton Greaves have to be checking this um, you know they'll make appliances uh, they make geezers yeah Kirloskar engine will make engines do you think they they would need to worry about this or it doesn't matter or so somebody needs to worry about it um, the only thing is traditionally Indian companies haven't had this role itself if you take historically there's nobody who was making this kind of decisions in India who was making those decisions somebody out there and we would just copy the technology copy meaning we'll just try to replicate right that's the model we have followed for a long time long long time 50 60 years 100 years Kirloskar was started in 1905 so it's 100 years for machine tools uh, but it's I'm assuming somebody would have to change because the competition is so intense you know you will you'll have somebody else making a product yeah um, so what happens when technology management decisions go wrong right let me let's get some idea how many of you have owned Nokia phone you've all owned Nokia phones when was that which year was that I thought you would not be owning a Nokia phone when was when did you own Nokia phone 2005 five. okay 2005 uh, you were in which uh, <laughs> which uh, sorry yeah 2005 is more than 10 years ago <laughs> okay how about you when did you you have Nokia, Nokia phone you had Nokia phone you had Nokia phone when which, which year was that 2005 all right you guys owned phone <laughs> very very young age yeah yeah so uh, you know there was one time where if you asked this question it would be everybody in the class right everybody in India uh, almost everybody in India would have Nokia phone okay um, I mean we grew up in, you know you would say that okay, you just see Nokia phones everywhere of course this is my dad has a phone similar to this even today some of your dads might be having okay <laughs> um, but uh, this was the phone which Nokia sold some 250 million of them for the first time for them it's like selling like this I mean they had never sold so many phones um, until they launched this particular 1100 it, it became very popular in fact the you know what was very unique about this which was appreciated by Indian people especially torch there are two things which were actually very unique one was torch and the second was that you know this keypad it doesn't have uh, you know your uh, dust cannot go in it's a dust proof keypad yeah so um, it was like that around 2002 2003 Nokia launched phone like phones like these this was a gaming device this was a I think a fashion device and this was they had an operating system called Symbian yeah and which was getting towards this was their version of smartphone yeah um, this is 2002 2003 I, I mean I am familiar because in I worked for eight years in this company called Saskin and out of them about six years was in this business I was in protocol stack division in a product company in India so I was watching this very closely I had to watch no choice yeah and then this is what happened um, so you have one color which is Nokia this is just a smartphone huh? just the smartphone shipments so this is Nokia which is the maroon color and the other is Android plus iPhone yeah and you just see what happened I mean you just see you just don't see almost the maroon color at all yeah so this is we just saw 2002 2003 it looks still like a dominant player it looked I mean it looked like what Google today is for search and Amazon is for 
you know your e-commerce it looked like a completely dominant and nobody can topple kind of player and that's it within few years just gone yeah um, in fact so somebody at Nokia would have to make a decision do you use Android or not right I mean we you you were chief technology officer some time back so somebody sitting there would be making a decision at that time frame which operating system should we use Android they had a Linux version which was uh, they had they were also launching they actually had launched Android based phones this is a X series which was launched I think few weeks or maybe a month or two before Nokia was sold to Microsoft yeah now you know Nokia just completely you know how old is Nokia by the way anybody knows how old Nokia is when was it founded roughly 1870s yeah so Nokia is actually fairly old company it started as a paper pulp kind of company yeah and it it has it has uh, taken a rebirth many times you know it, 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 it sold something else completely different completely different I mean it's a company which is not like just 10 15 20 year company right 100 and you know so many years company can just get you know can get wiped of course you can't say wipe because it may come up again and so on but I'm just saying see how what can happen because of a technology decision going um, wrong sometimes so it can actually wipe you out it can wipe you out in no time no matter how dominant you look that seems to be the game so you heard this term called creative destruction in one of those classes right do you remember what it means and this is what it means really you know something happens some android comes or a iphone comes and and together kind of it can just destroy something which is dominant please ask questions okay any any anything you have uh, i want to give you another example so kodak you know when was kodak founded kodak was founded also in 1880s george eastman 100 year old company fantastic 1900 in the year 1900 they launched the campaign uh, you press the button and we do the rest what it means is you just click and we'll you just ship the roll to us we'll do everything for you and that's what in fact it was about right I mean you you know if you really were into photography you would have to take the roll buy from Kodak do this do your clicking give it to somebody and they'll do the rest right and that model ran for like 100 years now what was interesting was Kodak also was the first company to file digital camera patent 1975 first company okay uh, there were several proposals in 1990s which were made to the board um, about how digital imaging um, is something Kodak should invest in they should move into digital I know because I, I know this information because one of my uh, colleagues you, um, the place where I did PhD SUNY Buffalo is very close to their headquarters Rochester so some many guys who finished uh, did their uh, you know graduated from our school went to Kodak and Xerox those were the place so he said they saw that proposals were being made they were rejected why because the films division had 70 percent profits you know you, the amount of profits that the films business had was huge and this is like they were saying some 40 percent or something you know which was significant but for them comparatively it was nothing so they were saying wow this whole digital business is not making sense because you guys are not making profits <laughs> rejected yeah and um, in the 1990 early 90s Bill Gates you know you, you you have heard of this guy called Warren Buffett as well yeah so they're good friends you know and this was the time when they became friends and Bill Gates joined his first meeting in the early 90s and he there's an annual gathering of friends of this kind of Warren Buffett and Bill Gates came in towards in between and sat at the end of the meeting and raised his hand when they were discussing Kodak is Kodak worth investing was the thing Warren Buffett was asking his friends and this young guy is raising his hand and saying Kodak is toast okay and none of these these are all old guys you know this Buffett and all they are not like technology guys they didn't know what is this young guy saying Kodak is toast this is such a solid business they had no clue what's going on 
and you know in, in no time not to, it took some time and it uh, Kodak filed for bankruptcy in 2012 okay. Um, so, it takes some time, but some people can see this kind of writing on the wall <laughs> yeah and maybe they started again um, as printers I do not know how they are doing now I have not tracked recently have you gone into a Kodak shop recently for printing no okay. So, maybe I am not sure at least not in India they are not doing very well for that. Uh, so, this is the example of what technology decisions can do. So, you see first of all it is not the ideas are not there in the same company people have ideas look there is internet coming there is digital let us do something yeah you see. So, it is not that people do not have ideas. Um, so, one way you could explain so this is just a kind of framework so there are three types of questions in innovation how do you build pipeline if I have to do something you need to have ideas first if you do not have any ideas there is nothing you can do. The second question is how do you improve velocity why by the way why is this idea thing shown like a funnel why is it shown like a funnel yeah you do not proceed with every idea that you get you pick some and throw some out. So, this is what I would call velocity which is moving the ideas forward not necessarily working on each idea working on some and maybe selectively throwing some and third is what I would call batting average is basically impact you need to have small ideas like singles and you have to have big ideas like sixers and you need to have all of them and, and that is what is batting average. But if you ask me what is really where everybody gets stuck is the velocity part most established firms suffer from poor idea velocity because you know and, and just to go back to Nokia example the time when 2012 when this guy Elope came as a CEO from Microsoft. I was actually engaged in uh, Nokia Bangalore uh, I live in Bangalore. So, I was engaged there working um, as a coach and you know trainer there and you know one of the things which in Indian context Nokia got pushed on was dual sim which is what Micromax came up with that time yeah it had dual sim phones and people really wanted dual sims Nokia was very very late in dual sims. And when you actually talk to people they said look we have a dual sim project going on just that is going on for a long time and it's going on at a slow pace you understand. So, it is never it is usually not a question of not having ideas it is a question of speed at which you can experiment and figure out whether it is something that you want to do something or not that is a challenge yeah and, and something to be probably learned at as well. So, if you just translate that to the terms we are using the POCs that people talk about are very very important we can just sit in here an AC room and talk about ideas for a long time and that will take us only so far you need to get your hands into doing POCs that is so important in this whole thing. So, I want to uh, spend some time about how decisions are made when you actually make products. So, there is a two pager um, case study that I will give you and we will ask have some questions yeah. So, the idea is there are few questions here um, first spend a few minutes yourself and then talk to the people your neighbors the idea is to talk about it to your neighbors yeah see what kind of things you you get as answers. Done, done, yeah, done, everybody done, done. Okay, so let us hear a few things from you then before I say anything. Where do you think this idea began? What began? Sorry, okay, what, 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 what do you think was, uh, I mean, what was the trigger? What would you, how would you map it to the seven sources that Sir said? Which source would you map this to? What was the source of this? That's where it began. Yeah. Change of perception. Yeah. Yeah. That's a possibility. Change of perception where, if you really see, you know, smartphones picking up, 
yeah in fact the story is little more interesting okay he was actually driving down on in manhattan and he saw every block that he would pass there was somebody with a uh, white headphones which basically meant that ipod was exploding okay this was also 2004 and it's the same year i guess perhaps he's also seeing smartphones picking up and he is making proposal for an investment now we are going back to this investment okay which will destroy his product which is exploding you see that's not easy i mean that's absolutely not easy because you would say boss this is i am this is my money i am getting so much money from ipods how would i invest in something that will destroy my product right but you have to see because sooner or later it will anyway be destroyed so actually they apple officially told the investors you know you need to i don't know how many of your family there is a investors call which happens for any publicly listed companies and they would answer investors they would actually mention that you know so last maybe ipod ipod is, is still there i'm not sure is still there but ipod's revenue declines when it started maybe lay, you know 2009 10 whatever you know they would say look we told you that anyway i you know iphone will can, it's cannibalize ipod revenues you know so it's it's that kind of sometimes you have to see that look if you don't invest your competitor will anyway yeah but uh, the other point is that if you take smartphone as an idea it would be in the air actually for number of years so many times ideas they say ideas are in the air i mean they don't have to i mean you just have to have an, a bit of an antenna which is little sensitive uh, otherwise they are around you yeah so this is that kind of idea i mean why would you need to be really a visionary to see janta buying smartphones yeah yeah but you need to be i mean the the thing is to, the boldness is to make a presentation that let's cannibalize our own product so that you know if you don't somebody else will okay um how do you think they there is this multi touch technology sorry they yeah they see this p1 p2 stuff and that's very very important especially one if one can afford see many times a startup may not have that kind of money it will just take p1 and go you know either p1 or p2 and either it succeed or it fails right but a company like this it can afford to run p1 p2 yeah and that's very important because you don't know and that's something you need to be a little humble about nobody can really predict everything about a technology how it will pan out what kind of risks it can pose yeah so at least you can't run p1 p2 for long time because that will need lot of lot of money but you can run for some time before you can start discovering which one will work better and that's very important yeah um the other way is that you know you see he when this tony fadel uh, no uh, this guy jonathan i presented him the multi touch he also brought other guys to review it that's also an important thing just so he didn't say oh i am the boss i know how do you you know how this technology thing works i am going to make this actually he he has that kind of image steve jobs was uh, the image is an arrogant guy who can just decide at the cost of everybody else but in this case at least he invited his colleagues whom he considered um, to be of they may bring different perspectives so many times you have an idea it's worthwhile talking to few of your friends to say what do you think what may not work what may work and different people may have different perspectives and that's very useful because one person alone is very difficult to carry all the expertise yeah um where do you think luck played a role in this did it, did it play, play a luck at a role at all or you feel it did play where did it play okay gorilla glass was a major luck factor yeah it was i mean definitely this gorilla glass was you know uh, it was like you see how we, we just talked about a technology which can lie dormant for a long time here here is an example right 
um, it just was there for so many years, 50 years perhaps. Yeah, any any other place? Yeah, yeah, finger works. Yeah, that was also you know you you usually will have some tiny player somewhere who is doing good work and they get acquired. You know, Microsoft has grown from its start like that. You know, it bought something somebody was doing, bought it and yeah. So you you don't have to necessarily make everything yourself. So okay, here is something you know I can. So in in case of startups, you know, since that's the primary thing, it usually is about partnerships. You don't acquire a company, but you don't necessarily try to do everything yourself. You say, okay, this can I partner with somebody and and do that together? Yeah. So that is one way to look at it. Um, anything you found about this approach of this Steve Jobs that okay, I can also do this? Did you feel anything? This part I can as a process. I can I can try to. Hi, you want you think you can do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's also. I mean, how it's basically you know, uh, it's it's you can say it's an being empathetic about what others feel. I mean, I for me it's okay, but how would my customer feel? Would he like this way or that way? That's a that's a crucial part. And in Indian context, usually, you know, it's it's always kind of um, not really looked at so much. You know, you call uh, you know so our customer service. You can say you always feel, man. I mean, why don't they be a little better <laughs> in terms of uh, customer service? You know, anything else? Anybody else? It's that you feel. Well, let, let me try to. Do, I can try this part. Nothing. So let me um, also point out a few more things that I have. Um, the first iPhone, if we can call it iPhone, was actually a failure, which is what they launched with Motorola. Yeah, right. I mean that's what they went to. It could have been successful as well. Who knows, right? Um, so failure is actually very much part and parcel. Of any time you take high risk, you have to be really, really lucky that you don't fail. Okay, so failure is an expectation actually, which means if you don't fail, then it should be surprising. You should expect. Okay, so one of the things that they say is you fail fast, so that you can recover fast. You fail at a cheaper cost. Don't spend so much money in failing. Yeah. So fail fast, fail often, so that I can get up and run again. That's the that's the trick because who knows what will succeed. So you don't go for oh I know the best idea. No, that's not the. Let me try this. If it doesn't work, next. You know. Um, but so uh, it's also important to differentiate between the problem statement and an idea solutions. Many times your problem statement may not change fast. The fact that you want to launch. A smartphone that may not change so fast, but the way you may launch may change. Yeah, um, the one which okay. So let me also show you what I like. So this is another aspect, um, which is of course taking a big bet is uh, is an important aspect of his approach. Focus is also actually a very important aspect, which means sometime you you run P1 P2. But you decide that at one some point it will be either P1 or P2, and moment you decide that you cut the clutter around it. That is not easy because you man I I don't have that option anymore. <laughs> yeah, but that's also very important because you otherwise you can become kind of you can do try to do all things. And third thing which is what she was referring to is making your product simple to use. Very very difficult, yeah. So simplicity actually is actually uh, you know that that was quite a unique thing. It's not easy for us, most of us. Okay. Um, anything else that you want to talk about which we didn't say from this? Your observation that we didn't. High pricing. Yeah, looks like high pricing has been part of their brand image for a for a long time. That's what they built. I mean, if one can afford it. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, it's been there, and they kind of maintained it, and it kind of became a religion, right? I mean, Apple is that kind of a religion. 
not everybody can have the luxury of that that kind of pricing stuff. If one can, why not? Yeah, please, please. When you introduce the classical user interface, yeah, yeah. They said that if you can find something, you can use my computer. Yeah. That will, like that time, people had to have the commands, yeah, you know, programming and all. Yeah. So top thing that if you can find, you have got everything that you need to do for yeah. doing all the computing aspects. Yeah. True. Sure. And even there, this graphical user interface was actually not theirs, right? I mean, they had Xerox Research Center where it was all developed. These guys, you know, went and saw all that. So, yeah. How old is, so let's go back to the question sir was asking, how old is multi-touch? Because multi-touch seems to be a technology which was, um, which we saw that startup using and all. Do you know how old? So, to just get to uh, understand how this S curve is how usually a technology adoption happens, ok. So, this word y axis is percentage penetration, initially slow and then it picks up and then it kind of plateaus, ok. So, this idea is again more than 100 years old, you know, um, somebody first uh, observed I think how crime gets, you know, uh, happens in the uh, thing and that based on that he got their idea. And then if you take relative uh, percentage of adopters, the rate of adoption, it is a bell curve usually, yeah. And um, you have, you know, so the people have given terms, innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, typically follows a bell curve, yeah. And then one guy, Jeffrey Moore, he said, look, there is a chasm between these uh, early adopters and late adopters, which means you can get early adopters after that the product does not take off at all. Yeah, and, and let us take a couple of examples. This is a thing called Segway, have you seen this Segway anywhere? This is like the electric thing. So, you know Steve Jobs in 2001 said this is as big a deal as PC. That is the kind of hype it had. It looked like an idea which is as big as PC. And there is a guy who is one of the major venture investors in, in Bay Area, more important than internet. And total number of cells have not crossed 50k, it is still running a very, very low key, yeah, it just did not take off. What you feel like it might take off, does not take off, you take nano, yeah, this is the kind of sales it had, it reached maybe to FY12 and that is it, it just completely went down, apparently in month of March this year, 700 nanos were sold totally, ok. So, um, I mean, there are ideas sometimes they do not take off, yeah. Um, so, will this technology cross the chasm and when will it cross it? How do you, how do you predict, do you know, do, do you know the formula that to predict this? It does not exist, ok, <laughs> nobody can predict, yeah. So, see each of your engineering, now this is where the, ma the, the innovation or management differs from engineering. Each of your branch would have some fundamental formulas to predict certain things in your branch. That is what engineering is about. And here it is a fundamental thing which says you cannot predict. Yeah, at least nobody has figured out how to predict this. It may happen, it may not happen. Yeah. Um, electric cars, you know this Chinese vendor called BYD. There is a guy called BYD, Warren Buffet is invested in this. Sold last year 171,000, 1,71,000 electric cars, plug-in cars, you know. So, it at least in areas electric cars are picking up and you know how old electric cars are? Electric cars are how old? Sorry? So, this is Edison with his electric car. More than 100 years old, electric cars people have been trying. See how long it can take sometimes um, for it to take. And we do not even know whether we can call it take off time right now, but it looks like a promising time for electric cars. But see, this is you cannot predict, that is the principle. And we can be so sometimes as experts, I mean, you are all going, out, going to go out of the institute with some expertise, you may feel confident, hey, man, I know this technology very well and it can actually fool you, that you, you may feel, look, if I do something, you know, it will sell, <laughs> may, may or may not, you know. You have to be, so 
it teaches you to be bit humble as well you know because it, you do not know <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what there is a Gartner company which has done something interesting they combined this S curve and the chasm and they came up with a curve they call hype, hype curve ok. So, it goes up then it goes down and then it instead of just going as S curve it comes as in between below the hype and this is uh, this is a 2017 uh, technologies which is currently which, you know which is at the top of the hype curve deep learning machine learning. So, that is a just because something is here does not mean it might take off. For example, this internet of things would be somewhere it would be coming down the hype curve is it oh, still left of IOD platform at least yeah. But you see uh, you know you you do not know at what speed they can move because if you knew you could say well I let me my company will bet on this uh, who knows you know, but, but it is interesting to look at them as to what what uh, um, virtual reality is, is kind of here which seems to be have, have gone past that phase and it seems to be in the mainstream yeah. Um, multi touch started in the 80s actually in the laboratory yeah and uh, when Apple invested in multi touch it was already here. So, it does not mean that Apple is investing in a technology which is really early in its phase. It is already more than 20 years since it is come out of the laboratory something like you know what is there in your labs today. The multi touch has been there for 25 years when Apple decided to put bets on it. So, but that is not the case for driverless cars for Google. Google invested in driverless cars when it is maybe here right I mean it is really really early on maybe it had that can. So, multi touch and any other example means essentially it is what technology is, but importantly what you can organize through that technology yeah, yeah, that is yeah. where it makes the biggest difference. That is true yeah. Um, an Indian example let us stick to the phones that we started with you know where which company really got battered in the recent past which was like you know doing very well and Micromax. Micromax. You guys, any of you have owned Micromax phones? Yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, so Micromax smartphone uh, market share was at 16 percent at some point it is at 2 percent 2.7 percent like in maybe 2 years time yeah it it tipped I think Samsung for a few few quarters came down and of course, I mean difficult to uh, exactly pinpoint, but first reason at least which is pointed out is after Geo came it was not ready with 4G and everybody wanted 4G and all these other guys Chinese vendors had 4G is I mean, but you might know better reasons if than that, but I mean this technology adoption sometimes can completely you know affect your thing. I mean it must be really really struggling right now. Apparently they say demonetization also had impact because there were phones where many sub 10,000 rupees phones and lot of them were actually being bought for cash and when that became a crunch it says it affected who knows you know. Now, one of the questions that is uh, we just said you cannot so 4G when it is being launched when Geo you know let us say Geo is going to launch 4G whether it will be successful or not is something you cannot predict, but what you can predict is the impact of success which means if it becomes successful then what will happen to you is something that is at least possible to imagine and that matters because your readiness to handle that situation is something that is important you know uh, because who knows 4G is successful or not, but if it is then am I somewhat ready at least and that is important yeah. Um, just to summarize disruptive forces need to be tracked 
Now, the dis why is disruptive forces in double quotes? Because which force might disrupt is difficult to predict. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean nanotechnology is likely to be disruptive. 3D printers likely to be disruptive. Driverless cars likely to be disruptive. Who knows whether they will be disruptive or not? Like we are electric cars, also people thought were disruptive 100 years back, and they were nowhere close to disruptive. So you can't predict, but you need to still track. You need to also experiment a little bit if you can. The chasm to be crossed. You could you could get somewhere, get first few customers, and get stuck there. That's that's actually quite possible. Yeah, and you can't predict if and when a technology will cross. Really, that's one of the key things. So uh, tell me now, any anything that any questions you have? So we sort of looked at how technology decisions. We started with these best and thing. You know, you you made some decisions. This is where I would invest. And these can be crucial decisions. We saw that Nokia, whether to go with Android or not, just can tilt the whole 100 year old business or one way or the other. Yeah. Any questions? No questions? What is this? Yeah. Not fair. Sir, yes? Uh, sir, as DS, at times, there are some students who are in advanced courses, like PG or PhD. They come to us with a very unique question. That they have an interest in a particular area, but uh, they do not know what exactly to focus on. Yeah. So they are very clear about a broad area they would like to work yeah, on. Yeah. And in that case, let's say they have identified four or five niche areas. Yeah. In technology areas. Ha, technology areas. Yeah. And what took their back? Yeah. What took their back? Yeah. So how do we answer this question? So I would say, um, you know, I would just let's go back to Edison because I, I know Edison, a lot of literature is available. So Edison's, uh, let me just tell you one story. He invented phonograph. You know, phonograph is what our MP3 player is, right? But it was mechanical. So you could record uh, a voice and play it back. He would mechanically move it. This was in 1877. He filed a patent and he took this phonograph to Scientific American building in New York and full day he was playing Mary Had a Little Lamb, okay? Um, and then in the next year, uh, like your uh, machine learning, the hot topic became electricity. Okay, so our man said, "Look, you know, of, of course he didn't know who might want to have that phonograph. He didn't have a customer who was coming and saying, boss, I need this phonograph.' There was nobody. Nobody knew that you could record and play it back. So nobody knew that uh, who would want it. So he decided to." play the electricity game for a while, which means he would dedicate his time to work on how he can generate electricity, distribute it and all that. He spent from 78 till early 80s, so he spent more than 10 years, 15 years before he sold the business to GE on just that thing and he parked this, but before he parked, he wrote 10 use cases. One of them that it could be used for educational purposes. It could be used for uh, recording somebody's voice. It could be used for recreational purposes. He wrote ten he for ten use cases, and he returned to those use cases fifteen years later. Founded a company. By then, there was an interest that actually the the opera singers and all those they may be interested in creating labels and and distributing, and that happened. The key point is, any technology can have associated use cases. Oh, this can happen. Who knows whether it will happen? This can. I think it will be good to first list those use cases. If this is a technology, what all can happen? And then you would want to test some of them. Go to market. Go and talk to people. Live with them. Would that be of interest? That's one one way to do. I mean, I'm not sure that's the only way, but that's one way. You have any other thing that? Something else? No, no, okay, no, that's okay. 